host please start uh, please start sharing your presentation Emma, can you please make Dr. Gohar Javed co-host? So Dr. Riba, are you ready? Yes, sir. So I'm gonna just do a, a brief introduction and then you can start. I think it's already eight and uh, we can start. So I welcome you all again to yet another <coughs> session of the Residence Corner Module. Uh, these sessions are arranged uh, by the Department of Neurosurgery at Leac National Hospital. Uh, the uh, the idea behind these sessions is to build 3D neuroanatomy, uh, which is very important while performing neurosurgery. The topic of discussion today is uh, posterior circulation, and we'll try and cover uh, 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 Ika and Pika today. Um, Dr. Ariba is fourth year neurosurgery resident at Lacan National Hospital. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the expert panelists today. He's one of my mentors during my training, and he's practically someone who introduced me to Rotan and uh, these in a clinical session because he used to um, he used to take these sessions when I was a resident, and I think um, um, some benefit uh, um, uh, you know shout out goes to him for introdu introducing us to Rotan and these in clinical sessions. Dr. Kohar Javed is uh, associate professor in health department at Aachen University Hospital. Uh, Dr. Gohar, it's uh, very kind of you to join. Thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Saad and uh, uh, all the participants. Uh, it's a great pleasure to join this session. And I think it would be very good uh, to interact with the, the participants of this session. Um, I, I think it's uh, it's good to learn uh, the anatomy, which is the basis of uh, neurosurgery, neurosurgical practice all over the world. So please carry on. Uh, the 
So the format is that the Ariba is going to present and then we are going to take in a case and uh, the um, part news uh, they have any. So uh, So, I'm Okay. So, uh, my name is Dr. Ariba Tade. I'm the Air Force Resident at Lakhat National Hospital, Karachi. So, we will be continuing with our posterior fossa arteries, Roton session. Last week, we studied superior cerebellar artery. This week, we are going to study ICA, and it will be followed by PICA in the next session. So, as this diagram is familiar to all of you now, last week, we studied this uh, very clearly that to study posterior fossa arteries and to study CP angular anything in posterior fossa, it's, it's better to divide it into three complexes, an upper complex, a middle complex, and a lower complex. Each complex has its own artery, its own part of the brainstem, its own associated cranial nerves, its own associated fissure, its own associated cerebellar peduncle, and a surface of a cerebellum that it's going to supply. So last week, we were discussing upper complex and we were discussing SCA. This week, we will be dealing with the ICOM, anterior inferior cerebellar artery, which is part of the middle complex. Just like we followed last week, uh, we know that a middle complex and ICA is going to be associated with pons. The cranial nerves that are going to be associated with it will be cranial nerves 6, 7, and 8. And the cerebellar pedun peduncle that is going to be associated with it will be middle cerebellar peduncle. The fissure that we're going to talk about will be cerebellopontine fissure because it's, a, it's going to be associated with pons. So the fissure will be cerebellopontine fissure. Last week we were discussing, we were discussing cerebellum mesencephaly fissure because we were discussing upper complex and midbrain. So this week this will be cerebellopontine fissure. And the surface of the brain cerebellum that we are going to that is going to supply is petrosal surface. So moving forward with the ICA. So the ICA courses through the central part of the cerebellopontine angle near the facial and the vestibular cochlea now. The ICA is intimately related to the pons, lateral recess, foramen of lushka, cerebellopontine fissure, as we discussed previously, middle cerebellar peduncle and petrosal cerebellar surface. Just as we saw in this diagram, that ICA is going to be associated with the middle cerebellar peduncle, is going to be associated with the cerebellopontine fissure, and foramen of Lashka, which we will see later, and lacrosis. The ICA originates from the basilar artery, usually as a single trunk, and encircles the pons near the abducens, facial, and vestibular cochlear nerve. The three nerves is associated. So as we can see here very clearly, two vertebral arteries joining together, forming the basilar artery. Basilar artery giving rise to the ICA. Um, two surface and it's going to be associated with pain of six, seven, and eight, as you're going to see further. After coursing near and sending branches to the nerves and from the acoustic meters and to the choroid plexus, protruding from the foramen of flushka, it passes around the flocculus on the middle cerebellar peduncle to supply the lips of the cerebellum, pontine fissure, and the petrosal surface. Now it seems like a lot of words, so let's use this way. This is going to the base of the artery, and this is ICA arising from it. As we can see, after arising from the base of the artery, it's going to be intimately related to cranial nerve 6, 7, and 8. And it's going to loop around here and supply the flocculus and the petrosal surface of the cerebellum. It commonly bifurcates near the facial, facial vestibular cochlear nerve complex to form a rostral and caudal trunk. We will be dealing with this later. We have already seen this diagram and this one. So again, a brief review. This is a gross anatomical dissection. We can see the two vertebral arteries joining together, forming a basilar artery. We can see the ICA arising from the basilar artery. We can see as it arises, it is in close proximity with cranial nerve 6, cranial nerve 7 and cranial nerve 8. And it loops around, around the flocculus here, this part of the cerebellum flocculus, 
and then it's going to be associated with petrosal surface of the cerebellum. Again, seeing its association with flocculus and the foramen of Plushka as we have discussed and seen in first slide. So moving on to push, uh, moving on some dissections, we can see two vertical arteries joining together. Here somewhere it will be basal artery, giving rise to the SCA superiorly, the one we studied last week, and ICA. In the middle, it's associated with cranial nerve six, cranial nerve seventh, eight, and it loops around here around the internal caustic matrix, giving many branches that we are going to study later on. So just like we did last week. We are, uh, we are going to divide the study of this artery into a journal anatomy that we did just recently, then segments, then bifurcations, and then branches. So as we studied in SCA, ICA also is divided into four segments. An anterior pontine segment known as the A1, a lateral pontine segment known as the A2, a flocconautilar segment A3, and a cortical segment known as A4. So as the name suggests, anterior pontine segment A1 is going to be running anterior two pons, lateral pontine or A2 is going to run lateral two pons, A3 flocculo nodular segment is going to be associated with flocculo nodular lobe, and A4 is going to be supplying the cortex. So anterior pontine segment is located between the clavus and the belly of the pons because it's anterior two pons, begins at the origin and ends at the level of a line drawn through the long axis of the inferior olive and extending upward to pons. So if you're going to draw an imaginary line through the long axis of the inferior olive at the level of midbrain and uh, at the level of brainstem and extending upward to the pons. Now at the point of uh, dissection of that line, the A1 will terminate and A2 will start. This segment usually, that is the A1 segment usually, lies in contact with the rootlets of the abducens nerve. Sometimes they pass above it, sometimes beneath it, so, but it's associated with six now. So to learn these uh, segments of the ICA, up till now we know that we have four segments. A1 is the anterior pontine segment, A2 lateral, A3 floccular nodular, A4 cortical. And A1 segment or the anterior pontine segment is closely associated with cranial nerve six. Now the lateral pontine segment or A2, this segment, begins at the anterior lateral margin of the pons, and passes through the cerebellopontine angle, above, below, or between the facial vestibular cochlear nerve. That is, can be either above, below, or between. As intimately related to the internal acoustic meatus, the lateral recess and the choroid plexus protruding from the foramen of flush gum. I think a better diagram to make you understand this would be this one, the one we studied. You are the closely related to the foramen of flush gum and the internal acoustic meters, and it may be above, beneath, or below the facial vestibular cochlear complex. So A1 associated with abducens nerve, A2 associated with vestibular and facial nerve. Now A3 or the flocconodular segment. This segment begins where the artery passes the rostral or cordial to the flocculus to reach the middle cerebral peduncle and the cerebellopontine facial. So it's going to run in the cerebellum pontine fissure. It's not associated with any print enough. And the last one is the A4 segment or the cortical segment which supplies predominantly the petrosal surface of the cerebellum. As we have discussed previously, that the stentorial surface of the cerebellum is supplied by the cortical branches of the SCA. The petrosal surface of the cerebellum is supplied by the cortical branches of the ICA. And the suboccipital surface of the cerebellum is going to be supplied by the cortical branches of ICA. So up till now, we know that ICA is divided into four segments, anterior pontine, lateral pontine, flocculonodular, nodular, and cortical. And anterior pontine segment is associated with cranial nerve six. Lateral pontine is associated with cranial nerve seven and eight. Flocculonodular nodular segment is not associated with any cranial nerve. It's going to run in the cerebellum pontine fissure. And the cortical segments are going to supply the petrosal surface of the cerebellum. So now moving forward, looking at some beautiful dissections. Um, give me a minute to remove the control panel. Okay. So as we can see, this is basically a step by dissection of different segments of the ICA. Starting from the first diagram, we can see we have two vertebral arteries joining together from the basal artery, giving rise to ICA. We can see A1, the segment that is going to arise from the basal artery, 
and running laterally, and it's associated with pair nerve six. A two or the lateral pontine segment running laterally. Sometimes it's associated. It's beneath the vestibulofacial component, component uh, complex. Sometimes it's above it. Sometimes it passes below it. And the, then the A three component is going to be associated with flocculus here. And we have the A four component that is going to supply the cortex or the petrosal surface of the cerebellum. Similar diagram here, just a magnified view, showing another uh, showing association between the lower complex and the upper complex. Here again, we can see the similar diagram, parts of the A two, A three, and A four. Now this is something interesting that that we are going to discuss further. Uh, so moving on. So the talking about origin of the ICA. The ICA usually originates from the basilar artery as a single vessel, most commonly from the lower half. From its origin, the ICA courses backward around the pons towards the CP angle, as we have discussed previously. Its proximal part lays in contact with either the dorsal or the ventral aspect of the abducens nerve. After passing the abducens nerve, it proceeds to the CP angle, where one or more of its trunk courses in close relationship to the facial and vestibular cochlear nerve. And thus are said to be nerve related. The bifurcation usually arises as a single trunk, usually bifurcating to a rostral and a caudal trunk. Approximately two thirds bifurcated before and one third bifurcated after crossing the facial and vestibular cochlear nerve. The segment that is proximal to bifurcation is known as the main trunk. And the two trunks formed by the bifurcation are the rostral and the caudal trunk. We are going to see this later. Uh, later. After crossing the nerves, the rostral trunk usually courses laterally above the flocculus to reach the surface of the middle cerebellar pruncal and petrosal surface to be distributed to a superior lip of the cerebellum pontine tissue and the adjoining part of the petrosal surface. And the caudal trunk is frequently related to lateral portion of the fourth ventricle. So as we can see here, two vertebral arteries joining with from the basilar artery, we can see IVCA arising from here, uh, A1 segment running laterally. As we chase the vessel laterally, we can see that it is closely associated with internal acoustic meatus. And uh, here it is associated with seventh nerve and the eighth nerve. Sometimes it gives off two branches, a caudal and a rostral trunk, sometimes before division, mostly after the division. And when it gives two branches, one of the branches is associated with fourth ventricle and the other one to the internal acoustic meatus and runs laterally. Now, how are we going to divide the branches in it. So basically, we divide branches into nerve related branches and non nerve related branches. The nerve related branches are those that force in or near the porous of the meters and by the facial and the vestibular pocket nerve. See, uh, the main the uh, course of the ICA is so consistent, so uh, so much associated with internal acoustic meters that sometimes it's better to divide it by the internal acoustic meters. So the segment of the ICA that is running before entering the internal acoustic meters will be pre-meatal ICA. The segment associated with meatus will be meatal ICA. And the part of the ICA that is going to be running after its course with the internal acoustic meters will be post-meatal ICA. So a pre-meatal segment is a segment that begins at the basilar artery and courses around the brainstem to reach the facial and vestibular cochlear nerve and the anterior edge of the meters. Now, if we are going to revise our previous uh, segment wise division, we said there are four, four segments of the ILCA an anterior pontine, a lateral pontine, a flocular nodular, uh, nodular, and a cortical segment. So, if we are going to divide ILCA via uh, making the vestibular cochlear comple complex as the main source, we can divide it into a pre meatal, meatal, and post meatal complex. So the pre meatal segment will include A1 and A2. That is anything that is part of the ICA before entering the internal acoustic meters. So as we can see here, ICA, this is pre meatal segment. The part that is going to be associated with meters will be the meatal segment. And then the segment of the ICA, the part of the ICA that is running uh, after its association with meter segment will be the post meatal segment. Now the meter loop or the meter segment is the located in the vicinity of internal auditory meters often forms a laterally convex loop, the medial loop, this one. 
directed towards or through the meatus the majority of the meatal segment coast below or between the facial and the vestibular cochlea as you can see this ica this is pre meatal complex meatal complex and the post meatal segment so uh, while i was keeping this diagram i thought it better to uh, just learn revise the anatomy of the internal acoustic meatus as we can see this is pre meatal complex the part of the ica is going to run in the internal acoustic meatus is the meatal complex and this will be the post meatal complex and as we know the components of internal acoustic meatus we know that we will have seventh nerve and eighth nerve running here so let's just i just kept this picture to give you a revision to uh, this was internal acoustic meatus and remember we used to divide it into four halves by the help of a bills bar and a transverse press so a bills bar divided into right and left or anterior and posterior and a transverse press divided into superior and inferior and we had a very famous mnemonic seven up coke down so we know that the seventh cranial nerve is going to run in the superior component chalo jaldi se guys please mute yourself uh, not ready by presenting okay so continuing so as we know the wavers mnemonic seven up coke down we know the seventh nerve is will will be running in anterior superior component and the cochlear nerve is going to run in the anterior inferior component and the superior and inferior vestibular complex will be running in the posterior superior and posterior inferior com uh, complex i think everyone knows the diagram so we are going to divide this internal acoustic meatus we are going to find these components like this so this is this seventh nerve running superiorly this is the eighth nerve vestibular cochlear nerve running inferiorly and this nerve the highlighted one is nervous intermedius and as we can see this is pre meatal ica this is meatal ica and this is post meatal ica there are some branches which we are going to learn let later on now another loop known as subarcuate loop which is present in some cp angles is a nerve related loop forming a second laterally convex curve that gave the loop an n configuration so uh, just to revise what is basically a subarcuate fossa when we talk about uh, internal acoustic meatus so we know that there is a depression a bony depression of fossa that is present laterally to it and a little bit superior to it which is known as subarcuate fossa usually there is an artery known as subarcuate artery that runs into it so what happens at some times uh, there is is a pre meatal a meatal and a post meatal let me draw this sometimes there is a pre meatal a meatal and a post meatal this is what usual configuration is segment is but sometimes there is an m shape configuration because um, there is a, a subarcuate meat complex a meatal complex and then a post meatal complex so this will form an m shape configuration like this this there sometimes it happens in some uh, in some cp angles seen in some cp angles this second loop was called the subarcuate loop because it was directed towards the subarcuate fossa a small depression in a bone superior lateral to meatus it's not a constant finding then the third segment or common segment is, is the post meatal segment this segment begins distal to the nerves and courses medially to supply the brain stem and the cerebellum so now uh, as we discussed previously these were the branches related to nerve now there are some other branches of the ica in the course of the cp angle the nerve related trunks give rise to four branches we have labyrinthine branches arteries we have recurrent perforating arteries subarcuate arteries cerebellum subarcuate arteries so labyrinthine arteries or internal auditory arteries are the one which enter the internal auditory canal and reach the inner ear so labyrinthine artery are going to supply the inner ear as we can see here so a branch a small branch from the ica that is going to run in the internal acoustic meatus and going to supply it is the labyrinthine artery 
recurrent perforating arteries are those which course medially from the origin to supply the pain stem. So these arise from here and they go back to supply the brain stem. In which part of the brain stem they are going to supply as we have read previously, it's going to be pons. Then we have subarcuate arteries, which passes through the subarcuate fossa to reach the subarcuate canal. We just discussed the subarcuate canal that its subarcuate fossa is present here. So there's a branch sometime that runs superiorly in this fossa. And it's, this is going to be known as subarcuate artery. And another branch is the cerebellum subarcuate artery um, in constant findings, which terminated by sending one branch to subarcuate canal and one to the cerebellum. So the common branches, we have labyrinthine arteries on, or the internal artery canal artery that are going to run in the internal caustic meatus. We have the subarcuate arteries that are going to run to the subarcuate fossa. <coughs> we have recurrent branches to brainstem and sometimes we have cerebellum subarcuate arteries. Moving on to some good dissections. Uh, we have done this before. We know that this is a magnified view of the CP angle showing the middle complex. We can see the cranial of eight. Uh, we can see the flocculus. We can see the pre-metal, metal, and post-metal complex. We can see a labyrinthine artery that is running into the internal acoustic meatus. Following it further, dissecting this, we can see this is subarcuate artery. And it's going to go into the subarcuate fossa, a depression present on the uh, and above the internal acoustic meters, it has been divided here. We can see this, we have a drilled internal acoustic meters here. Again, a better diagram showing subarcuate artery arising from the ICA, labyrinthine artery running into the internal acoustic meters. And there will be some recurrent perforating branches supplying back to the pons. <coughs> Similar picture but a better dissection. We can see we, uh, that dura has, uh, the internal acoustic meters has been drilled here. We can see cranial of seven. We can see the pre metal loop of ICA, the metal segment, the post metal segment. We can see the uh, vestibular cochlear nerve, the eight nerve here. We can see the nervous intermediates or the sensory uh, part of the cranial of seven. And we can see the labyrinthine artery that is going to run in the internal acoustic meters. <coughs> Again, a similar diagram, a better uh, dissection from another view, showing a pre metal segment. This is going to be the metal segment, and this is post metal segment. And we can see recurrent, recurrent perforating arteries that are going to arise from here, going back to supply the pons. Dr. Vivek, uh, Dr. Riba, can you use a pointer instead of a, it's a smaller pointer, we can't see this. Oh, sir. So this is the premetal segment. We can see the medial segment here. And as we can see here, this is the recurrent perforating artery that is going to arise from the ICA here and going to supply the pons here. So again, uh, just giving uh, an anatomical orientation to the internal acoustic meters. We <coughs> know that subarcuate fossa is present laterally. And an endoscopic view uh, will show you the labyrinthine arteries running inside mm -hmm. the internal acoustic meters and subarcuate artery supplying it. So moving to the cortical branches, after crossing the nerves, the rostral trunk usually courses above the flocculus to be distributed to the superior lip of the cerebellum pontine tissue. And the caudal trunk courses caudal to the flocculus to supply the inferior part of the petrocell surface. If the ICA is absent, the caudal trunk may supply almost all of the ipsilateral suboccipital hemisphere and the vermis. So going back to a very earlier diagram, we can see that the middle complex of the ICA will supply the petrosal surface of the cerebellum here. But if the pica is absent, it is also going to supply this, that is the suboccipital surface of the cerebellum. Last week, we also discussed that sometime uh, a segment of the ICA is missing. So the SCA gives rise a branch which supplies the petrosal surface of cerebellum. 
and that was the marginal branch of the STA. So moving forward, overlap of the SCA onto the upper part of the petrosal surface and the pica onto the lateral part of the suboxial surface is not common as we know previously. So looking at some uh, other views of the CP angle, we can see the ICA here. We can see it's associated with cranial nerve 7, cranial nerve 8, and as we can see, there is a subalquate artery that is going to end in the subalquate fossa. Again, uh, another orientation, we can see this is going to be the anterior, posterior, lateral to medial. We can see the ICA here. We can see the facial vestibular cochlear complex here. We can see labyrinthine artery, which is a branch of the ICA, which is going to run in the internal acoustic meters. Now, uh, just to include a little bit uh, clinical anatomy with the ICA. Uh, ICA aneurysms are very rare. And uh, usually the ICA is commonly exposed in operation for tumors of the CP angioma. So to find, uh, to see a case of ICA aneurysm is very rare. And they are mostly likely located at or near the internal acoustic meters. So there's a basically a classification system for the ICA aneurysm, which I thought would be interesting to include in this discussion. So as per Roton, uh, the location of the ICA aneurysm uh, So basically, uh, we have three types of ICA aneurysm. We have a proximal aneurysm that arises from the ICA origin to the meatal loop. Uh, it is pre-meatal complex. Then we have a meatal aneurysm that arises from the meatal complex. And then we have a distal aneurysm, which arises from the end of the meter or the postmetal complex. So as per the roton, this part, the proximal or the premetal complex would correspond to anterior pontine segment and the lateral pontine segment. And the middle complex would correspond to uh, lateral pontine segment and the medial part of it, medial part of it. As we have discussed previously, uh, to summarize it, basically we have two classification, two se segment system. The one which was described by roton, uh, which was followed previously was A1, A2, A3, and A4. A1 is anterior pontine, A2 is lateral pontine, A3 is trochulonodular, and A4 is cortical, which we studied earlier. Then there is another way of dividing the segments of the ICA, which is nerve related, which is pre meatal, meatal, and post meatal. So when we discuss aneurysm of the ICA, we have a similar classification. We have two classification systems one which was followed by Roton and one which is basically location-wise on a new classification. So the proximal or pre-meter would correspond to the anterior pontine segment and the lateral pontine segment, which is pre -meter. And the meter, middle part of the meter complex would correspond to the lateral pontine segment, meter complex. And distal would be floclo-pendular and cortical segments. Another uh, association that... Uh, I thought would be interesting to include in this presentation is uh, nowadays there's a great debate and we are discussing dividing ICA uh, basically into a vest and its association, its loop forming association with the vertebral, uh, vestibular cochlear complex. So there are different types of loop that ICA makes with the vestibular cochlear complex and we divided into three types on the basis of it, type one, type two, and type three. Type 1, in which the artery doesn't run in the internal acoustic meters. Type 2, in which it just enters the uh, internal acoustic meter. And type 3, in which it forms a proper loop inside the internal acoustic meters. So uh, we basically divide or uh, classify the vestibular cochlear complex and its associ association with ICA into three types. And it's commonly seen on the free star sequence as type 1 loop, in which it's not entering the internal acoustic meters. Type 2 loop which just enters the uh, internal acoustic meter but doesn't extend further in it. And type three, which extends more than 50% into the internal acoustic meters. And ending off with uh, angiographic image showing the SCA, which we have discussed last week, ICA, which was discussed today, and PICA, which we will be discussing in the next session. So to round off my session, uh, let's just revise it uh, quickly. We know ICA, it arises from the basilar artery and it's divided into four segments. 
A1, which is the, the anterior pontine segment associated with cranial nerve 6. We have A2, which is lateral pontine segment associated with cranial nerve 7 and 8. We have A3, which is floculo nodular floculocondylar segment associated with floculus and the middle cerebral peduncle. We have A4, cortical segment supplying the petrosal surface of the cerebellum. We have also divided ICA into premetal, metal, and postmetal complex. The branches that are important and we should know are the uh, recurrent perforating branch, which is going to run back and supply the brainstem, a labyrinthine branch, which is going to run in the internal acoustic canal, and a subarcuate branch, which is going to run in the subarcuate canal. And an in common finding is cerebellar subarcuate artery, which, uh, supply one, which one part supplies the subarcuate canal and another part to the cerebellum. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Ariba, for this detailed presentation. And now I would request Dr. Kohar Javed uh, to uh, share his expert opinions and thoughts on the uh, on the topic, and if he can share a case if possible. Dr. Kohar. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so it was a nice presentation, Dr. Ariba. Uh, well described, well explained, and uh, you supported uh, the the presentation with the good diagrams. Uh, so uh, the case that I am going to show you is uh, that of uh, an aneurysm, which uh, basically arose from the uh, from the pica, and it was a case where both ica and pica had a common origin from the bezerar. Uh, it is uh, a very rare condition where pica and ica have uh, common origin. And uh, it is these cases which give rise to these peripherally situated aneurysms. As you know, the peripherally situated aneurysms which are present on the cortical branches uh, are either due to infections, uh, which are called mycotic aneurysms, or usually, or in, in other cases, they are associated with these anomalies in which, uh, uh, just like this, where uh, ICA and PICA had a common origin. So let me. Uh, share with you the uh, images and uh, then i'll describe those images <clears throat> dr Ariba, have you stopped sharing yes sir so yes, sir, this uh, this is uh, an axial ct ngo uh, uh, we are looking at the basal cuts and uh, as we see at the basal cuts is just above the foramen magnum, uh, lower part of the cerebellomedullary fissure. As you know, the uh, uh, pica is basically uh, an artery of uh, the occipital surface of uh, cerebellum. Ica is uh, the artery of uh, petrosal surface of the cerebellum. And... Uh, so PS cerebellar artery or SCA is basically an artery of the uh, tentorial surface of the cerebellum. So this is quick uh, way of uh, remembering the territories of these arteries. So basically uh, what we are looking at is the territory of pica. So it's uh, the uh, cortical part of the pica. Uh, like uh, all the, uh, all the uh, cerebellar arteries, the, they have... Uh, uh, a pre-bulbar component, a bulbar component, a post-bulbar component. A post, the post-bulbar component usually has loops and trunks, usually two trunks, uh, usually a rostral and a caudal trunk. Uh, and uh, usually they have a loop, uh, which is true for uh, superior cerebellar, the ICA and the pica also. And uh, these cortical segments, they usually ma make a loop, either one of them or both of them. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, the arrow is pointing uh, towards the, uh, the cisternal part uh, of uh, post-bulbar pica. Uh, this pi pica had common origin with the ica, as uh, I just told you. And it shows a very tiny... Uh, uh, aneurysm uh, at at a place where it, it is forming a loop. Uh, the pica is uh, recurring back on its course. And uh, as you know, uh, the aneurysms, they usually arise either at the branching points or at the turns of the arteries. So loops of the arteries 
are a favorable place for developing uh, aneurysms. Uh, that's where uh, the right pica has developed this aneurysm. This is a small aneurysm which bled and uh, led to the uh, uh, both subarachnoid hemorrhage as well as intraventricular hemorrhage. Uh, so uh, what we did was, uh, it was so small that uh, clipping uh, was not uh, possible. So uh, there are various ways in which uh, you can deal with the aneurysms. One is to, uh, to apply a clip uh, and with peripheral aneurysms where they are very small uh, and the uh, appropriate size clip is not available then, uh, and the artery is uh, spareable or dispensable, then you may sacrifice the artery. So in this case, uh, we had to sacrifice the artery uh, and uh, we secured this aneurysm. Uh, let me show you the other uh, view of this uh, and uh, so this is the other view as you can see the arrow is pointing again at the lower part of the cerebellum medullary fissure uh, this is the area where usually the pica uh, supplies the the uh, tonsils, um, and this is the tonsil part of the pica. So um, this aneurysm, as I told you, uh, we had to deal with this aneurysm, this tiny aneurysm, with the the sacrifice of the artery, and uh, the patient did well, post-operative. Um, so this is the message uh, for today's session that uh, these arteries, usually uh, the pica uh, aneurysm, they arise at their origin, which are called basal, uh, which are called vertebral pica aneurysms because uh, usually it's the vertebral artery which gives rise to uh, pica. And uh, so vertebral pica aneurysms are in fact the uh, second most common aneurysms of uh, the posterior circulation after basal artery aneurysms. <clears throat> uh, uh, this is an uncommon place to find an aneurysm on pica, uh, like it is an uncommon place to find an aneurysm on, on a peripheral branch of middle cerebral artery or anterior cerebral artery. Same is true over here also. Uh, these are less than 5% uh, of uh, the total aneurysm that we see in the usual practice. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bahar, for your expert opinion and sharing this excellent case. Um, you can you guys can go and see this case. This uh, this case was actually reported. Um, Ica Pica uh, If there are any questions, uh, the uh, <clears throat> participant can use the chat box. If not, then we would like to uh, conclude this session. Next week we will we will be discussing Pica. I uh, I think today we uh, Dr. Ariva took enough time to. Uh, describe ICA, so there was not enough time to go through PICA. Uh, I thank you again, Dr. Gohar, uh, for joining us. Um, we would like to have you again um, in the future sessions, um, if you are available. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me to this session. It was a pleasure uh, being with you and attending this session. Thank you. And since uh, there are no questions, if there are no questions, then uh, I would like to conclude this session. I will see you all next week. Please take care of yourself. Thank you.